Praise the Lord for an opportunity to extend tonight. Amen. Give honor to my pastor and to the other ministers in church and thank you, God. And, uh, it's just an honor to get to stand and to, live, and to deliver God's Word. And uh, I've been listening to the inauguration a little bit and it seems like everything's on the the economy, and everything's got to spinning around one thing, and my mind just got to wondering on things, and, and I've got a message tonight that I hope it helps us, and I want it to. I don't want to destroy nobody, but every once in a while we've got to tell you right here, and uh, this weekend, you know, the services, I don't know if it helped anybody else. But I went home high and lifted up. I had to chew on some of it a little bit. And uh, but sometimes a wise person, you know, they're willing to take instructions. So a foolish person will turn to rage. And uh, the day and time we live, we got in we live in, we got to be able to take some instructions. Because I believe there's men of God who still hears from God. Amen. And uh, I believe that. And uh, the day and hour that we're approaching, and I'm just talking a bit, and I'm going on and getting God's word. But uh, as Brother Willis was up here singing tonight, he's a man I respect very highly. I know he's going doing God's work and all that, but I sure do miss getting to sing with him. And. Uh, I appreciate him. I don't want to just pick him out, but I always have appreciate him. I'm going to be uh, using a text tonight out of Ecclesiastes. I'm going to be in the Old Testament tonight. It won't be a real long lengthy. I'll use four or five verses. I'm going to skip around three or four places, but I won't take you far. Y'all be in much prayer for me tonight. Bless you, Jesus. I can maybe get these butterflies out of the way a little bit. And, uh, I do have a message for us tonight. And I spent a lot of time in prayer about it. And I want God to use me tonight. Oh, yes, yes. We're going to start at uh, Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. We're going on the first. We're going to read the first and second and the third verse. We're going down to the tenth verse. And we're going to go over to the 15th and 16th verse. I said in my heart, Go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this is also as vanity. And I said of laughter, It is mad of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heavens all the days of their lives. Go on down to the tenth verse. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labors. And this was mine, portion of my labors. Go on down to the 15th and 16th verse. Then said I in my heart, as it happened to the fool, so it happened even to me. Yes. And why was I then born wise? Then I said in my heart that this also was vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever. Seeing that which now is in the days will come shall all be forgotten. And how died the wise man as a fool? If I had a, I guess a title you would call it, to put on this message tonight, it would be, or the things are the things that you are living for worth dying for? 
or the things you're living for are worth dying for. I just read in your hearing tonight. Let's go to God in prayer, and I'm going to get into my sermon. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? Raise your hands towards heaven. Lord, we can follow me tonight. Let's go to Daniel tonight. God, I'm to you tonight that you want to support him, Lord. Give him liberty. God, you know. Well, thank God that you have to go forth tonight. I know it, my brother. Lord, you know the hearts here tonight. Hallelujah. God, you know the needs here tonight, God. Oh, God. Lord, let's serve you tonight. Let us serve you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody knows who Solomon was. He's done any Bible reading at all. You know he was a wise man. He asked God for wisdom. And God granted his request for wisdom. But can I tell you tonight there are people who think they're so wise that they really don't need God? That's right. Right. Do you believe we live in a day and a time when people are so smart or they think they're so smart? They're so, so smart on computers and other things that they don't think they really need God? True, brother. Amen. True, amen. Well, I'm going to talk to you tonight just a while. You go a long way. But I'm going to tell you tonight, you can gain this whole world. Come on, brother. Come on. But if you don't have the Savior, it'd be better that you never be born. So true. Solomon was a man who was wise. I believe he knew God. I believe he had God's favor. But it seemed like he got so wise in his own understanding. He got so wise. I uh, heard my father say, son, don't get above your raising. Come on now. <coughs> Bless you, Jesus. We live in America where people have got above their means. Right. right. All I heard yesterday, the day before, how are we going to get things turned around? But I also heard Brother Danny Patrick preach Sunday morning. We don't need more prosperity. We need people to turn back to God. <laughs> We don't need more pleasures. Right. Solomon tried the pleasures. Yes, sir. Solomon tried. All through the scriptures that I didn't read, he talked about I. And I preached along these lines, and God brought it back to my heart. And he said, I've done this. I've had servants. I've had handmaidens. I've had servants born in my home that pleased the pleasures of him. Yeah. He had cattle, which represented wealth in those days. The prosperity was all around him. He lived in a palace that took 13 years to build. He had everything around him. Everything you looked at, it looked like prosperity. It looked like everything was okay with him. But I'm going to tell you here tonight, if you ain't got the love of God down in your heart, and air, it ain't all right. It ain't all right. I've heard preachers sugarcoat it. I've heard them bring it down. They, the men in my eyes, they've done everything. You don't have to live like you used to have to live. Solomon thought that. But this book was wrote a whole lot later in his life and he was kind of reminiscing about what had happened all through the, the chapters he follows it's vanity vanity means it's just substance it don't amount to nothing it's just there it's not there but he said I tried to 